Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly at the Dusseldorf Boat Show, uh, and I've come to have a look at an Arcona. The interesting thing about this boat is it's the 415, which is an update of the original 410. Uh, the updates are mostly cosmetic, so hull windows, coach roof windows, but also an open transom and increased lazarette stowage at the stern. But importantly, this one is the 415Z, which means she is an electric boat, um, and that now comes as standard. You can have diesel if you want, uh, but you actually have to tick an option box for that, albeit it will save you a little bit of money off the final price. I'll talk you through the electric system when we get on board, but let me show you the boat first. Now, our coners have a reputation for going to windward uh, absolutely brilliantly, and this is partly why. You can see this really fine entry to the hull, incredibly sharp bow, and there's even a very slight concave here, which you can just see, which just means that she slices to windward like anything. She's also quick off the wind. She's not quite as wide as some of the boats that might plane downwind. Um, but you will point higher and sail faster upwind than almost anything else on the water. Well, certainly that's what we found when we've tested her. Here's the keel. This is a cast iron keel with a lead bomb on the bottom. And this is the standard two meter 20 depth. You can have a slightly shallower two meter version, or you can have a deep keel two and a half meter version if you want. And then almost all of the skin fittings are completely flush. We've actually walked past the bow thruster already, which retracts. Um, there's just an anode here for the water-cooled fridge inlet. There's a log impeller further forward. You've got a water intake for the electric uh, motor. This is an ocean vault system, SD15. Um, so it's water, the motor is internal, it's not a pod drive, um, and that's water-cooled. And then you can see there's a little anode here just to, to protect the propeller. And then because the boat is relatively narrow on the water line, uh, with a really fair run aft. She has a single deep rudder, which gives you really good control for both manoeuvring and sailing with a minimum of drag and absolutely loads of grip. So here's the hull. And as you can see, she's got the optional bow sprit. You don't have to have that, but for British sailors, you'll probably have a bow roller there anyway. So it's quite a nice little thing to be able to set off wind sails from it. These are the newer, larger hull windows um, updated um, in 2021 for the 415. They were just sort of small over lines, which, over windows which were in line with the cove lines before. They're a bit bigger and square now, but they are still lined up with the shear line to keep the aesthetics right. Larger coach roof windows, all perspex. Let's step on board and have a look. Here at the stern, now first thing you notice is that the transom has been opened up. There was a helm seat behind each helm station. Now you've got an open transom with a really uh, solid uh, stanchion point in the middle and that actually folds down into a bathing ladder, which is a really nice touch. Just clip that up again, there we go. So doing away with the helm seats means that you can have these huge aft lazarette lockers. And you can see that they are hull depth. You've got stowage in there for an anchor, sheets, access to your steering quadrant, heating system, so huge amounts of space in there, lots of space for dinghies, life rafts, fenders, all that kind of stuff. So helm positions, you've got twin wheels going to a single rudder. You've got these really nice large carbon wheels at a reasonable height and good big solid handholds around a single chart plotter MFD here so you can access all of your systems. Um, and then a seat outboard that's raised off the side deck so you don't end up with a wet backside. Foot chocks here so you can brace against them when you're helming. Uh, and then small stowage rope bins under there. And there's a gas locker here for a single gas bottle, camping gas bottle in there. Um, it would be nice to have space for two camping gas bottles as it is one has to be stowed in the anchor locker if you want to carry a spare. It's a really nice view forwards or you can sit outboard and helm like that. And then you've got the main sheet winch uh, just forward of the helm station there. You can have that powered if you want, um, meaning that you can sail the single-handed. And there's a full width cockpit traveler here. 
So the uh, main street comes to the end of the boom um, and you've got really good access to that here um, as well. So you can sail this pretty well single-handed. Primary winches are further forward and then you've got uh, winches on the coach roof as well. So looking forward in the cockpit, it's a reasonably wide cockpit, nice long benches either side. And then for bracing, you've got this raised section here to brace your feet against when you're heeling. And that actually lifts up and under here you will find a cockpit table and legs for the cockpit table which attach onto these stainless points here and then you can see here you've got opening hatches for the aft cabins there's no um, cockpit lockers under these uh, to maximize headroom for those aft cabins which is where the lazarettes come in handy and there's also a bow locker but what you do have are some really nice cubby holes and not so many boats do these now but you can put all of your cruising clobber in there and at the forward end of these lockers you've got a rope bin in here really deep rope bin so that all of the lines coming aft from the coach roof come down and you can stow those away out of the way and here we've got a powered halyard winch this is a harken 46 um, and there's also a deflector on each side so that you can bring the halyards from one bank of clutches or the other to the opposite winch, um, which is really nice. If you want to use the powered winch or this winch is being used, you've still got options. Right, stepping forwards then, coming to come onto these nice wide side decks, not too difficult to step over, next to the quite low coach roof. And then you don't get a handle grab hold until you are slightly further forward than the spray hood, which is nicely folded away in this molded unit here with a canvas cover over the top of it. And one of Arcona's trademarks is this deck. So you wouldn't put teak decks on the side decks of an Arcona because you've got this molded grip and that's actually a gel coat that is uh, put into the mold before the hull is uh, laid up inside it, um, which means that it's really durable, robust, and it's also quite a nice uh, muted gray color. So it's not gonna give you too much glare in the sunshine either. Here you can see that we've got these flush solar panels mounted either side. That looks really smart. You can, all the wires go below decks and they sit on top of the tunnels here that go forward to the mast where all the lines are led aft to the cockpit. And then just outboard of that, you've got the really sizable jib car tracks, which are towable jib car tracks, um, and also a turning block because you've got a German main sheet system which is led aft to the cockpit winches. Uh, chain plates are taken outboard here, keeping the side decks pretty clear, maximum stiffness for the mast, and then really good clear walk through forward. Again, you've got this molded grip decking uh, around the mast, you can put teak there if you want to, and flush hatches, a large one there for the saloon, and another big one here for the forward cabin. And then you get onto this lovely open foredeck. Um, you've got good teak tow rails around here, there aren't any grab holds, um, which would be nice, but otherwise this is a really good space and a nice place to sunbathe if you're in harbour as well. Right, coming forwards, we get to the bow anchor locker. Uh, so let's take a look inside there. Here, we've actually got two separate lockers. So in the forward part, you've got an electric windlass with a remote um, and a reasonably, reasonably deep fall there. It's not hull depth, but it's uh, fairly deep, so the chain should be okay. Uh, and then here, after that, you can see that we've got all of the sails packed away in here. Spinnaker, uh, jib, all sorts. So that is a cavernous sail locker in there, which is brilliant. Forward of the anchor locker then, we've got uh, below deck furling head sail. And this is the optional bowsprit, which is a GRP molded bowsprit, again with this nice deck molding, grip molding, two attachment points for off-wind sails, and an integral bow roller for your anchor. It's an open pulpit to make stepping off over the bow if you're in a marina or moored bows to a rock a little bit easier. Obviously this is a Swedish boat so they're geared up for sailing in the, uh, in the Baltic. And then here you can just see the little aperture where the furling line is led aft up out of the locker there. Walking aft again you can just see how nice and clear these side decks are. I'd be ducking under the lower shrouds just there if they were rigged. No mast inside the hall. There you go, and then I can walk along the side deck all the way aft to the helm, or I can just step over the combing into the cockpit and down. So let's have a look down below. 
First of all, you can see the washboards here. There's just very simple but effective washboard stowage um, just by the companionway. And you'll notice you've got a really high uh, lip before you, that you step over so that any water on deck doesn't find its way down below. Um, lot, and this is where you start to see loads of beautiful woodwork. So going down below, you've got four uh, wooden steps, curved at the edges, beveled, uh, with a nice little bit of uh, gripping, and four steps down and you're in the saloon. And here you're in a slightly different world. This is beautifully finished, proper Scandinavian workmanship. And this boat is finished in a classic mahogany, um, although lots of owners now might opt for a lighter oak colour. This is pretty classic um, and timeless. So the saloon then, you've got C-shaped seating to port uh, around this enormous table, which has a locker beneath it. The bottle stowage, glasses stowage, and whatever else you want to show in there. Everything's varnished inside, properly finished. This is uh, really nice workmanship. Leaf opens out to the other side to the starboard berth, which is um, over two meters long, uh, making a really good sea berth as well. So you could sleep two crew in here if you needed. And then on either side, you've got bookshelf space and locker space, which is well ventilated with these grooves at the top. All the usual boat show clobber and things in there. And here are the hull windows as well, these nice big hull windows. And you'll notice if you look carefully that these are lined up with the shear line, so with the, the line of the deck head, rather than with the water line, uh, which just makes the boat look right from the outside. And then back on port side, you've got almost the same arrangement with a little bit more bookshelf space on that side. Moving aft then, you've got a really generous galley. locker space in the end of it. Uh, we've got a slight return here so you can brace against that when you're cooking in a seaway. Um, and you've got a large double sink here. And a good big fridge. It's a single fridge but with two opening tops. So you don't have to open and get the whole thing cold. Getting your beers cold in there. Very important. And then there are hatches, lockers, sorry, lo lockers above the galley here. And then we've got a two burner gas hob. Uh, you probably could opt for um, induction cooking these days if you wanted to. And there's loads of locker space, a nice chopping board and drawers under there. You've got a bin behind the, behind the cooker. And then you've also got lockers, sliding lockers for plates and things in there. So a really practical galley. On starboard side, you have a chart table that is going to delight traditionalists, a forward-facing, full-size chart table with stowage in there, plenty big enough for uh, leisure charts. And then next to that, you've got the, uh, let's move that out of the way. Uh, you've got the electrical panel, so you've got switch panel there, uh, and more space for instrumentation if you want a chart plotter down below. And that hinges open to reveal this one hinges down to reveal some beautifully neat wiring work, everything properly labelled and accessible. So sitting at the chart table, it's really secure and snug. Um, you haven't got any bracing if you're on starboard tack and healing to port, so you would probably need a little bum strap around here, but otherwise this feels really safe and secure. Um, and I really like having a chart table on a boat, even if you don't navigate down here, you can do your emails, work remotely, as so many people do these days. Um, and it's just a really nice space. So we'll just have a look under the cockpit sole. Obviously nice clean bilges in a brand new boat. But importantly, what you can see in here is a steel girder. And this boat has a steel frame rather than a laminated matrix, which is absolutely solid for spreading all of the loads uh, from the keel and the keel step mast here. Um, and taking the rig loads as well. So coming through forward into the forward cabin, you've got a really large uh, V berth with a good wide end there. You could use that as the head end if you wanted to. Most people will sleep with their heads at this end, but thanks to the large bow locker, it's mean, meant that this berth can come a little bit further aft. To port, you've got a nice seat to dress on. Uh, 
locker with shelving space and then behind the door you've got some hanging locker space, usual boat, boat, clobber, boat show clobber in there and a little hook which catches the door handle and keeps it back. So let's just have a look in the heads compartment here. You've got really good hanging locker there after the toilet. Um, here's the sea toilet. Uh, and this is the shower compartment as well. So you've got a draining floor. Uh, you've got a really nice sink and locker space and then lockers there with the mirrors in front. Just come in. And there you've got the shower and some hanging space for wet kit there as well. So this boat is the three cabin one heads version. There is a two cabin version as well. And you can also have a second heads on the boat. This one's just got one heads. So this is a nice big berth in here. The engine box impedes on it ever so slightly. Nothing too serious. And then a locker here and some good shelf space outboard. And then you've got one of these big hull windows there, which is lovely, as well as an opening hatch there and an opening hatch here just above the seat of the cockpit. Let's go into the port aft cabin now and this is where we see the electric part of the boat, small as it is. And here you can see we've got the engine box removed which is where a diesel engine would sit normally. And then we have a charge box and below that you can see here this blue disc is an Ocean Volt SD15 15 kilowatt sail drive unit water cooled and that is the propulsion for this boat and that's driven off um, batteries standard is uh, 24 kilowatt hours uh, which will give you um, a range of just over 20 nautical miles at six knots or you can upgrade that to 38 kilowatt hours which will give you another 10 nautical miles of motoring Unless, of course, you also opt for this, which is a six kilowatt gen set. Um, and that will mean that while that's running, you can motor indefinitely at six knots as long as you've got fuel. Um, so that's a really good range extender. So effectively you run that and you've got a hybrid engine system where you're not limited on range. So let's have a look at the batteries then. We've got uh, a bank of 48 volt batteries here. Uh, mirrored on the other side and there's some other batteries under the starboard saloon berth where you would normally have the fuel tank. Under the port saloon berth you've got water but this is what um, stores the power for your electric propulsion. So headroom in the 415 is really good. I've got about 1 meter 95 uh, of headroom at the aft end. As you go forward that decreases slightly um, but actually it's a really good amount of headroom in this boat. So if you opt for diesel propulsion you will have a diesel engine in here but in this boat, you can see that we've got the gen set built in there and you've got really good access to header tanks, water strainers and all of those usual bits. All insulated inside there, so it should be really good and quiet. And you will have your diesel inboard there if you opt for that instead. So that's the 415. In terms of construction, she is vacuum infused vinyl ester resin over a Divinicel core except around skin fittings and keel fittings and things where you have solid fiberglass, solid layup. And then she has uh, stringers, longitudinal stringers laminated into the hull, as well as the galvanized steel frame, which takes all of the loads from the keel, rig and mast, which are also laminated in. So she's an incredibly stiff and strong and light boat. So that's the Arcona 415Z. I have to say it's exciting to come onto a boat that is fully electric as standard. Um, although I have to say that for longer term cruising I would definitely be opting for the gen set as well. Most times you go out sailing you're not going to need more than 20 nautical miles at 6 knots. But it's really nice to know that if I wanted to get home across the English Channel, motoring, say the wind had died and I wanted to get back for work on Monday, that I could do that I would have 60, 80, 100 miles range easily as long as I had enough fuel on board um, and I could do that at six knots which is a really nice uh, thing to know that you've got in your back pocket should you ever need it. 
She's obviously beautifully built and finished. Um, all of the uh, interior furniture, the bulkheads are all laminated into the hull, which all adds to the stiffness of the boat as well. And it's finished to a really high degree of craftsmanship, as you would expect from a Scandinavian boat and from Arcona in particular. In terms of price, um, the base price for this boat is 355,000 euros excluding VAT and that's in the electric version but without the gen set. If you opt for diesel you actually save yourself 15,000 euros so, so it would be a base price of 340,000 euros excluding VAT. Now for my British viewers out there if you imported one into the UK paid your tax on it and spec'd it up to a really nice level with all the sails and everything you need to sail away um, much as you've seen this boat, you would be looking at about £530,000 sterling, and that includes tax. So who's going to be looking at one of these boats? Well, she's a performance cruiser. She's not designed as a racer, although if you did take her out racing, she has the potential to do very well. But she's really about um, fast passage making, um, which means that you can sail further in the time that you've got, or you can cover your passages more quickly and in more comfort because she's really seaworthy She's going to sail to windward better and you're just going to cover a lot of ground, which is exactly what you want if you're exploring under sail.